My name is Rick Wilson, and I served as an ABH3 Aviation Bosun mate, third class. After commissioning, well, they, they took the ship over to Pier 12, um, NOB Naval Operating Base, uh, Norfolk, and uh, we started getting ready to go out to sea, and uh, the first uh, few cruises, uh, we went off the Virginia Capes, and uh, we sailed her, and uh, it was basically checking out that everything worked as, uh, as ordered. And, uh, and every department had their own responsibility, hangar deck, all the elevators and everything and training. We were in training as, as well. I had never operated an aircraft elevator before, so they showed, they showed us all how to do that. And, uh, and safety was, uh, was very, uh, very high priority. And uh, so we spent uh, a few months going out for a day, two days, three days and uh, checking systems out. They brought aircraft aboard. The pilots were experiencing landing on a brand new ship, taking off the catapults. It's, uh, it's quite an operation. And then uh, finally when we were ready, they, uh, we were sent down to uh, Guantanamo Bay, which is really a, a training center. Well, it was then. And they have uh, FTC down there, Fleet Training Command. And they came on board, and these were evaluators, and they put us through you know, I used to watch World War II movies and say, we're going on a shakedown cruise. Well, this is kind of a McHale's Navy kind of thing. These guys are having a lot of fun. So I was, I was kind of looking forward to it. But uh, when we got into it, it uh, again, that was Hollywood. And uh, when we went down to Gimbal, that was reality. And it was, it was tough slugging. It was tough. They checked everything on that ship. I have um, photographs. They did uh, uh, checking the ship's performance out. They, they were doing um, hard turns. So they take the take the helm and hard starboard, and the aircraft carrier is top heavy. So when it's turning starboard, it would bank or list, as it were. And I've got pictures. It was like 10, 12 degrees, and I got pictures of uh, crew members on the flight deck who were standing, landing like this. And uh, the one that I that I find most memorable is uh, uh, and most times when you were underway, it's like being in this room. You couldn't see outside and you'd say, are we underway? The only way you knew if you were underway is if you read the plan, we're getting underway at 9 o'clock. 10 o'clock, we're underway. You couldn't feel it. But um, this one day, they, uh, they were doing speed trials and seeing how fast the ship would go against the specification. We never knew how fast. That was a classified statistic. But we knew we were going pretty quick. I mean, that whole ship, uh, she was a shaken. I mean, when I say shaken, I mean shaken. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite quite an experience, and we did that, and uh, you know, fire drills and aircraft fires. I mean, they were heavy on the safety thing, and we do every day, and then general quarters every day. You know, you man your battle safety, They'd seal the ship up uh, like a can with a, and um, of course they turn everything off. You know, for uh, prepare for a nuclear attack, they'd shut down the ventilation system. So wherever you were, if you were inside the ship, it got it got pretty warm for you know a couple of hours maybe. Yeah, so they, they put us through through everything. And rightly so, because we had to be prepared to, to perform our duty. Okay, let me start with the meals, because that's an easy one. We had, we had sailors coming from different parts of Norfolk Naval Station coming to, to chow down on our ship. The food was going like going to a fine restaurant. Now, you know someone's going to look at this and say, this guy's putting this on. But no, I'm not. The chow was absolutely fantastic. I probably gained 10 pounds when I was on the America. The food was great. Um, <clears throat> living conditions were brand new. Uh, the older ships, uh, they had a two-inch mattress on a, on a canvas frame. We used to call them racks. And uh, I never had a problem with that. But, and then you had close to where you, your bunk was, was a, uh, a locker. And that's where all your stuff was. And you had a locker, like a school locker almost. But when we got on the America, the locker per, um, was a part of your bunk. So you'd lift up your bunk and there was everything. And there was quite a, quite a bit of room to, to store your stuff on. And it had a lock on there too. So. And uh, fully air conditioned. As a matter of fact, I like to tell the story. Um, in our birthing space, it got really, really cold. <laughs> it's like 110 outside. And I remember we're looking, does anybody know where there's blankets around? And um, most ships have, uh, large ships have uh, shipboard police force. They're referred to as master at arms. And um, we had, got, and by this time we pretty much knew, you know, most of the people on board a ship, ship's company that is. And um, I remember we found a, a stash of blankets, 
So here we are, hot footmen across the flight deck, and each of us is carrying about six blankets and 110 degrees. And he goes, fellas, hang on a second. He says, what's wrong with this picture? Blankets? Well, the air conditioning, and, and my bunk was right on the, on the floor, and the air conditioning duct was right there. And I mean, I froze at night. Yeah, so that was, but other than that, the, uh, the conditions were, everything was bright. Each bunk had a, had a private reading light. And uh, I found it very, very comfortable. And it was beautiful, beautiful ship. 